In this video, we're going to be taking a look at pages Word 80 and 81, which is entitled Dividing a Document into Sections. And dividing a document into sections allows you to format each section of the document with different page layout settings. A section is a portion of the document that is separated from the rest of the document by section breaks. And section breaks are formatting marks that you insert into a document to show the end of a section. Once you have divided a document into sections, you can format, format each, doc, uh, each section with a different column, margin, page orientation, header and footer, and other page layout settings. By default, a document is formatted as a single section, but you can divide a document into as many sections as you like. And this is going to be very important when you take a look at this so that you can actually take one page, make it portrait, take another page, make it landscape, and you can make one page be a single column, another page be a two column or three column. And we're going to be doing that in this document. On step one on page 80, we're going to right click the status bar uh, on the bottom here, just like we did in the first video. We're going to right click the status bar and it tells us that we want to make sure that the section on the on the customized status bar menu that opens is checked which mine is currently checked if yours didn't have it checked then your status bar looks very similar to this but to get it on there you just right click your status bar and click on the section and that should have a check mark by it you can click somewhere in the document and that will remove that menu on there of course you can use the customized status bar menu to turn on and off the dis display of information in the status bar. Step 2 tells us we're going to click on our home tab. Then we're going to click on the show hide button. That's in the paragraph group on here. And what we've just done is turn on the formatting marks, which when you're using sections is very important. Because otherwise you won't know particularly where a section ends and begins at. Step 3 tells us we're going to place the insertion point before the headline, QST launches new tours to South Africa on there. So we scroll down and we see that right here, here's our heading, QST launches new tours to South Africa. We are going to place our insertion point before this heading. The next thing that continues on with step three is that we're gonna click on the page layout tab. This is where we're gonna be adding in our breaks. And it tells us that we're going to click the breaks button in the page setup group. So here's our page setup group. Notice we have margins, orientation, size, columns. But right up here, one of the smaller buttons is the breaks. When we click on that, there are different types of page breaks. You can look on the bottom of page Word 80 on table D1 and figure out the, what these different types of breaks will do. Uh, we have, of course, just a page break, which will get you a brand new page. But we want to look down here at section breaks, these bottom four items here because we have the next page section break, which will begin a new section and moves the text following the break to the top of the next page. There's a continuous break, which is gonna begin the section on the same page at your insertion point. Then we have the even page, which begins a new section and moves the text following the break to the top of the next even number page. And then we also have the odd page, which inserts a section break and moves the text following the section break to the top of the next odd number page. In step four, it tells us we want to click on continuous. So notice that when we click on continuous, we now have this uh, formatting mark here that shows us where there's a section break. If I would go to my home tab and click on the formatting marks, notice that it disappears. That's why it's important to keep the formatting marks on so that you can see where those section breaks are at. Now the document is now split into two different sections and we can tell that if we look down at our status bar, notice that down here it says section number two. So my insertion point is in section two. The next thing we're gonna do is, and this is step five, is that we're gonna click on the columns button and that's in the page layout group, or the page layout tab once again. And it's in the page setup group and here is columns. We wanna click on columns here and that will open up the columns menu. And you use this menu to format the text in either one, two, or three columns of equal width, or you can create two columns of different widths, one narrow and one wider. To create a column with custom widths and spacing, you wanna click the more columns on the columns menu. On step six, we wanna click on 
two. So we're going to make this two columns. And notice that the top text in section one is still in one column. However, everything else beyond that is now in two columns. And you can tell that the status bar down here still says section two on there. And you also can notice as well that we've gotten rid of one of our pages. It was a five page document. Now we have only four pages of information. And you can format text and columns, and that's another way to increase the amount of text that fits in on a single page. On step seven, I'll scroll back up to the top here. On step seven, it tells us we're going to click on the view tab. Then we're going to click back in on the two pages, which is in the zoom group. And then we're going to scroll down through the document to examine the four pages. And notice it's not even four full pages. So you can see on how much more information you can fit on a page in columns. Once we have that, we're going to press our control home, and that's going to take us back up to the top of the document on there. And we're going to click on our save button to save the document. Of course, when you delete a section break, you delete the section formatting of the text before the break. The text becomes part of the following section and it assumes the formatting of that section. So you want to be careful when deleting out section breaks after you've been formatting your document. Now there is another thing that we can take a look on page 81, which is changing the page layout for a section. And it tells us here that dividing a document into sections allows us to vary the layout of the document. In addition to applying different column settings to sections, you can apply different margins, page orientation, paper size, vertical alignment, header and footer, page numbering, footnotes, endnotes, and other page layout settings. For example, if you're formatting a report that includes a table with many columns, you might want to change the table's page orientation and landscape so it's easier to read. To do this, you would insert a section break before and after the table to create a section that contains only the table and then you would change the page orientation of the section that contains the table to landscape. Now something else you may want to take a look at on there is what we call the vertical alignment. And on the page setup dialog box, if we would go back to that on here again on the page layout and go to page setup on there, on the layout, notice that here there's the vertical alignment. And the vertical alignment is uh, how it's set on the page. And typically it's aligned to the top and works its way down. But you can have it centered on there so that the page is centered vertically on the page. Just like if you were putting centered text into a document where it bounces between the right and left margin, the centered vertical alignment will center the text to the top and bottom of the document. And that concludes uh, the video here. You can hit cancel if you took a look at that uh, on there. Uh, so just make sure that you're at the top of your page, make sure that you've saved your document, and you now may move on to the next video, video 3.